three quarters so that the nose and the cheekbone are in line and the side view we have taken pictures before before the procedure we will apply anesthesia to our patients so that is not so painful not so sensitive i usually use two types of anesthesia application and infiltration in this case we will use application anesthesia because the drug with which we will carry out the procedure contains lidocaine we apply a good thick layer of anesthesia to the lips very good thick layer and clap it on top with a fill at the end of the webinar i will show you what drugs i use and what I use in my work. I put the film on top to create an, an occlusion and we can leave our patient for 15 to 20 minutes. By the way, it can be up to an hour. If you leave the anesthesia on for longer, nothing terrible will happen. As long as the film is on the lips, the anesthesia works. It stops working when you remove the film. We applied anesthesia covered everything with a film and the exposure time of anesthesia is 10 or 15 minutes you can even hold it up for an hour the anesthesia will not stop working the anesthesia lasts as long as the film is on the lips and now we can send our wonderful patient natalia to wait for the exposure time of anesthesia and now i will show you the anatomy tell you about the contraindications and indications and also show you another interesting method of anesthesia i like to use This is our patient Xenia, on whom I will show you the anatomy. So our lips are composed of a white ridge of skin and a red ridge called vermilion. Between the white and red ridge, we have a red lip border or contour. The upper and lower lips are connected by a commissure. Also, we are going to work with the corners of the mouth in our techniques and contouring. On the upper lip, we underline the bow or the cupid's bow, which has two tops. In fact, in the Russian lip technique, our aim is to make the cupid's bow more marked and make the lips flatter. Then they look sexy, bright and very pretty. We also have two filtral columns that extend from the base of the nose to the tops of the cupid's bow. Let me tell you the location of the muscles. In general, anatomy is very important in any correction, especially when working with fillers. This knowledge is important in order to avoid complications and unpleasant phenomena. In the anatomy of the muscles of the oral region, what is important for us, first of all, is that it lies superficially. I'll show you the muscles on the one half and the vessels and nerve on the other. So what muscles do we have here? The most important, the main one, is the circular muscle of the mouth. It is located this way. This is the sphincter. It lies on the lips. This is how the circular muscle of the mouth is located. This is a superficial muscle, that means it lies completely superficially and actually under this muscle there are also many other muscles. There is a muscle that raises the corner of the mouth. It goes like this. There is a muscle that raises the upper lip. It goes like this. There is a large and small cheekbone muscles. There is a muscle of laughter. There is a muscle that lowers the corner of the mouth. It is located here. 
all these muscles lie deeper, it means that they lie under the circular muscle of the mouth. Our circular muscle is superficial. We have a muscle that holds the lower lip. With this muscle you need to be very, very careful when working with botulinum toxin. It lies deep enough, therefore, when working in the lower third of the face. All injections must be carried out superficially. In general, all injections in the periorbital area, especially if we use botulinum toxin, are made superficially. And the last muscle that we will look at is this chin muscle. It lies here. We can also work with chin muscle with botulinum toxin, but here you can work deeply. You need to be very, very careful in this area not to get into the muscle holding the lower lip because otherwise the lower lip will wrap inward. This is a very unpleasant complication, but it, in today's masterclass we will not work with botulinum toxin, but for the overall development everyone must know. This muscles and the skin, the oral area in general, are supplied with blood by the facial artery. We can feel the pulsation of the facial artery somewhere along the bone edge. It goes in this place into the facial area and it goes somewhere a centimeter lateral from the commissure through the nasolabial fold and passes into the angular artery. Somewhere at the level of the commissure, the facial artery is thick. It gives off two arteries, the inferior labial artery, which feeds and supplies with blood the lower lip, and gives off the superior lip artery, which feeds and supplies with blood the upper lip. Sometimes this blood supply goes at the same level as the commissure, so when you work with corners of the mouth, you need to be very careful here. The superior labial artery also gives off columnar arteries there. These are the arteries that feed and supply with blood the columella. We need to point out that all the arteries, the inferior and superior labial arteries, lie deep enough under the circular muscle of the mouth, and only here, in the columella area, the arteries are on a more superficial level. So when we prick our lips, here we can get some undesirable phenomena, vascular complications, so we prick our lips with superficial techniques. If you work superficially in this area of the lips, then it is quite difficult to get some undesirable vascular phenomena. There may be process, there may be some kind of swelling, there may be an allergy, there may be anything, but if you work according to the technique, observing the technique, and not injecting very deeply under the mucous membrane, then vascular complications are very rare. In my practice there have never been one, the doctors had one case described in their literature, but in my practice there was none. So in this area you can work boldly. Where do we work carefully? We work carefully in the area of the commissures, because somewhere at this level the facial artery gives off other arteries. Here you need to work carefully, because here you can get ischemia, and carefully we work in the area of the nose, and in the area of the filtral columns. Here we work carefully. How are our zones innervated? The upper lip is innervated by the infraorbital nerve. There is a very interesting test. Uh, the patient looks in front of her and along the mid-pupillary -pupil line, about a centimeter below the bone edge, there is this zone. It's the infraorbital nerve. Uh, it's the place where it comes out. It gives branches of the superior labial artery, which is responsible for innovation and for sensitivity. Therefore, by blocking the infraorbital nerve, we can achieve 
complete anesthesia of the upper lip. So the patient will not feel anything. The lower lip is innervated by the chin nerve. It comes out in the chin area and it is responsible for the sensitivity of the lower lip. Infiltration anesthesia is one of my favorites because the lips are very sensitive zone. This is an erogenous zone and there are sensitive patients who would like to turn off any specific sensitivity at all during the period of lip augmentation. So here we carry out infiltration anesthesia or the one used by dentists that, that are injections containing lidocaine. I also love adrenaline containing drugs for this technique. We make them from the inside, from the side of the mucous membrane, and just the fact the infrabital nerve and the chin nerve thus completely turning off the sensitivity of our patient. And this is the anatomy. I have told you about the muscle structure. The most important thing is probably the blood supply into this area. If we do lip contouring and work with gel, as I've said, in this area we work superficially, without deep injections. We do not go into the submucosal layer, we work within the vermilion border of the lips, do not go beyond the contour. This is the essence of injections, this is the essence of Russian lips, then your results will be wonderful, beautiful and safe and the patients will be the happiest and the most grateful. I've told you the anatomy, now we can let go of the model. I showed you the anatomy on our wonderful model and while we were examining the anatomy, the exposure time of our patient's anesthesia came to an end. Her mouth area is completely numb and we can start the procedure. Now I will invite her and at the end I will answer all your questions about indications, contraindications, drugs that we worked with. So write your questions in the chat and once again I remind you that if you have any questions during the webinar related to technical problems, you can click on the green button and our specialist will contact you and individually will solve your problems and your questions. Are you ready? Let's get started. Everything is already numb. She won't feel anything. I remind you that the drug contains lidocaine. We need to put on a hat. Lie down. Remove your hair so that nothing goes into the anesthesia field. and we can take it off. Taking off the anesthesia. We will carry out the Russian lips technique. These are superficial injections. Our aim is to accentuate the cupid's bow to make it sharper and more marked and make the lips flatter. As we can see, the upper lip is a little more plump than the lower one, so we will take about 0.45 milliliters of the drug for the upper one and 0.65 milliliters of the drug for the lower. There is also a slight asymmetry. The right half is slightly smaller than the left one and we'll make it even. Our model is ready for the procedure. The drug is Uvidem free. We open it. Repeat that it. I repeat that it contains lidocaine. We have syringes for one milliliter. One milliliter of Jividin. I love the syringes. I think they're very beautiful. We take a drop of the drug into the needle, and we are all ready for injections. I will draw the 
tops of the cupid's bow that we want to make so we will have it here and here so that we have it even here are the filtering columns so that we have an even symmetrical lip injections will be carried out this way I will reach the mucous membrane and leave the drug pointwise pressing the lip down a little where we want to make the top of the cupid's bow I will leave a small bolus and then in a fan like manner also pointwise from one point we will form the cupid's bow I'm going to show you all of this clearly it is necessary to treat the area before the procedure I treat everything with an antiseptic abundantly. I always moisten cotton pads so that there is a lot of antiseptic. And then I start. We have the drug with lidocaine so the patient will be as comfortable as possible the first injection will be felt then it will be easier we'll find the top of the cubit's bow and inject superficially from the vermilion border you can see that my needle is seen through a little bit we reach the mucous membrane we don't go beyond the mucous membrane we don't go beyond the contour and drop the drug drop by drop and pull the lip out further then we make a fan about 10 degrees and leave the drug here you can press down a little bit A small bolus can be left. We crumple our lips a little bit. A little bit further we do the second injection under the contour and slightly obliquently. We also go superficially to the mucous membrane and drop the drug under the mucous membrane. It is dotted it is we we spread it point by point and a little bit more and spread it in a fan like manner we get such a beautiful arc And we continue doing the same. Here we have such a beautiful right half. We need to crumple all these lumps a little and go to the left half to form a beautiful arc here too. We reach the mucous membrane and drop the drug point-wise, putting it in a fan-like manner. We leave a small bolus at the top and we get such a beautiful cupid's bow. Under the contour we make the next injection and superficially reach the mucous membrane and spread the drug out from the mucous membrane in a dotted manner. We are turning around the needle 
You see how beautiful the drug lies in? Lies into the lips. How they unfold, we reach the mucous membrane and drop the drug point-wise. Such a beautiful upper lip turned out, as you can see. A very marked, beautiful Cupid's bow and such a flat lip. You can add a little more to the left. We also look at the symmetry, leave a small bodice at the top. Then our Cupid's bow will be sharper. And here we can also add a little more. The upper lip turned out so beautiful. Be sure to crumple the lips. Just as I've said before, we have 0 0.45 milliliters on the upper lip because it was a little more plump. We will do the rest now. So our lip will turn out to be symmetrical. When we open the lip, we also look at the symmetry. I see that there is not enough drug in this zone. And we will add a little bit here. We also inject under the contour, make an injection, and inject the drug where it seems to us that it's not enough. Be sure to correct the symmetry. I have such beautiful lips, beautiful, plump, sexy Russian lips. I will now change the needles so that the patient is more comfortable. The needles after a few injections are usually blunt, that's why I usually change the needle in my lower lip to make our patients comfortable. We ask you to, to open the bottom a little and we will also, in a fan-like manner, spread the gel in the lower lip. And then we will go to the lateral, lateral, lateral part of the lip. The corners here are already very beautiful. They look up by themselves, so we will not do anything with the corners. We define the center so that we have an injection strictly in the middle. We also read the mucous membrane, turn the needle towards ourselves and drop the drug point twice. I turn the syringe, turn the needle, and turn my lip, leave the drug drop by drop. I press a little with the needle on each drop, and I unfold my lip. You see, we have such a beautiful unfolded smile. Then I make the next injection, about a centimeter from the initial injection point, not behind the contour, but inside the contour. I make an injection from the vermilion. I reach the mucous membrane and also drop the drug point-wise. Turning out my lip a little and pressing a little on the needle tip. Look how beautiful the smile turns out, beautiful lips. And in the other direction, also living about a centimeter from the initial injection, from the vermilion, I go to the mucous membrane 
It is very important not to touch the mucous membrane. And I leap for the truck drop by drop. Pressing down slightly on the tip of the needle just so that the surface tissues catch. It is about 0 0.1 milliliters on one of this fan. We look at the symmetry. It is symmetrical. And like that we walk with the corners. Make the injection from the vermilion and also inject the drug by expanding the lip. And on the other side we inject the drug from the vermilion within the contour. This is beautiful. It seems to me that it is possible to make the bottom a little more plump. We still have a little more drug. But I think that we will inject it all to the lower lip. Let's make sure that the lips are as symmetrical as possible. You can make another small injection in the upper lip on the left. And you need to turn the center even harder. But in general it turned out very beautiful. We will raise the left half a little more. If we level something, then we carry out all the injections under the contour. All the injections are under the contour. Maybe there is a slight asymmetry here due to the bruise. We have a small bruise on the right, therefore the right half may seem larger. This is due to the fact that we have a bruise, a hematoma appeared. And also, from the camera angle, it may seem that the right half is slightly larger. But in fact, when the swelling subsides and all the bruises heal, our lips will be perfectly even. But if I now align my lips and I will inject a little more into the left half, then at the end of the rehabilitation, when the lips heal, there will be a symmetry. So now there is no need to inject more gel into the left half. Now, if you look at this, then everything is even, except the small bruise. But no one can get away from them. Now, maybe we will inject the gel to the left a little bit. And like this, it will get more symmetrical and neat. And we will inject the rest of the gel into the lower lip. We will inject it to the center. And inject it according to the same scheme. You can also insert a little polyus of the needle. We inject it in three vectors. We will inject the drug. Now there will be a little swelling and then everything will be very, very beautiful and symmetrical. The swelling usually lasts for 3 to 5 days. You can still inject a little into this half. I also inject it in a fan-like manner. And this is how we got our lips using the Russian lips technique. They are plump and juicy, sexy, beautiful.
The patient is now lying down. Uh, when she will be standing, we will see the upper and lower lips proportionally. She is lying now, so the lower lip falls a little inside the mouth. So if we open our mouth, a little smile, we see how beautiful she is. That's it, I have demonstrated the technique to you. Now a little more can be added. If you see our lips have become flatter, we marked a bow. And this is how the Russian lips look like. Let's show our patient standing and I'll tell you later which drug we used in what volumes and compare the symmetry. After the procedure I will make a small presentation of our product and tell you what courses do we have, what other masterclasses we have and I'll answer all your questions. Prepare your questions right to the chat and if you have any problems with the broadcast, with the connection, click on the green button below and the support group will contact you, discuss all your questions and solve everything with you individually. After the procedure, while the patient is getting up, I will tell you their recommendations. For three days, I do not recommend you to eat or drink something hot. You cannot visit the swimming pool or sauna or solarium for a week. If you have herpes, take antiherpetic drugs. Now I will crumple the gel a little bit more. If there are lumps, and there may be lumps, then all the lumps need to be crumpled. If there are no lumps, then you do not need to crumple anything. After the procedure, we crumple it a little bit and tell the patient if uh, she notices it at home, she needs to crumple it. We ask Natalia to stand up and come to the wall. We will take a look in our lips in a standing position. Dear students, thank you all for joining our free webinar. And now I will give a short presentation and then I will answer all your questions. By the way, the masterclass that I gave you today costs from $500 in Europe, so you had a wonderful opportunity to visit it for free. Let's say thank you for the Russian Academy.